guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing a video that's just really like a casual life update video. This past week has been the week of Eid, so Ramadan has come to an end and we've celebrated Eid. So today is Tuesday and Eid was this past Sunday. So it's now been two days since and I just kind of wanted to give you guys a, a quick life update. I didn't have time to film like my usual sit down topic videos that I do. This week I was super busy, both on their Eid, before their Eid, and after since. I'm like, I'm filming on the day that I usually upload, so I'm not even sure if this video will be up on time. But maybe what I'll do is just like, as minimal editing as possible, and then try to upload tonight if I can, or I'll be uploading in the next couple of days. I'm also not filming at the usual time of day that I film. I'd usually film in the morning, like in front of the window with all the great lighting, but today, you know, I had a really busy day today. Um, I went out and about and was like shopping in Beirut and stuff like that. So I just got home like maybe an hour ago. And so now I'm sitting down to film in the late afternoon. So I'm like not in my usual place that I film. So basically I'm just gonna go through a quick life update, kind of talk about, you know, how quarantine life in Lebanon has been, when I'll be going back to the US, if I'll be going back to the US given the corona things that have been happening, how I'm, how I'm feeling about this past Eid and this past Ramadan, the possibility of not seeing my family in the United States where I'm from and then I'll talk about like getting a job for the summer and then also I, I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions for me for this video and I got a few responses so I will answer those questions as well at the end. Just to update you guys on quarantine life in Lebanon, how corona has been affecting Lebanon, just things like that. I mean I think for me personally it's hard for me to find established news on corona in Lebanon, I mean, there definitely is some out there, but it's just a bit harder to find it. So basically, just in my experience, Lebanon has not been as hard hit with Corona as the United States. I mean, it's a much smaller country, and I also think that the country as a whole took proactive steps towards preventing the spread of Corona in the beginning, just after they got a few cases in the, in the country. So they closed down schools and, and put a lot of measures in, in place to prevent the spread of Corona. And so, the cases are, as of right now, I think around like a thousand or so cases. That's basically been the situation. So I guess there haven't been tons of cases of corona in Lebanon thus far. And so as a result, I think life is just a bit more relaxed here than maybe in the United States. Like quarantining is a bit more relaxed. There definitely are rules in place, like about, there have been rules about like, like who can, who can drive on certain days of the week, like how many people can be let in stores, how far apart you have to stand, things like that. But as time has gone on and in recent weeks, things have kind of lightened up or the strictness of rules have kind of lightened up. So for me, quarantine life has been honestly not that different from my usual life because I was you know, ordinarily prior to the whole Corona situation, I was I was staying home anyway. I was I was taking class, taking Arabic classes, and just studying at home, doing my homework, and then I'd go to class and my classes in my apartment complex, so I didn't even have to leave. So basically, it's been the same for me. I mean, it's just that a lot of things have been closed. We haven't been able to like go out as much as usual, but things are not honestly that different. Recently, things have been even less strict than they were in the beginning, like rules about you know going out and. Um, about like which types of businesses can be open, things like that. It seems like things are getting better. The airport closed pretty early on in the beginning and it's still closed now and I think will be until um, the end of June as of right now, although they could extend that time further. But it's looking like I will not be able to go back to the United States until at least then, if not afterwards. We were hoping at the beginning of the year, we were hoping that we would be able to go back to the US by you know by summertime and be able to spend the summer there with our families me and my husband and then go back to come back to Lebanon for the following school year but now it's seeming like if we are able to go back maybe it'll be for several weeks towards the end of the summer and the prospect of like either not going back or going back for a very short time has been a little bit sad I guess especially since I do miss the United States a lot you know it's just something that I'm kind of wrapping my head around sort of like really living here and not just being here for like the school year if that makes sense but it, it is a little bit sad when you miss like certain things about the united states you miss like you know your family and and conveniences that you have as a person living in your own country as, as a citizen of your own country just like conveniences that the u.s has that lebanon doesn't have like you know an abundance of like online shopping like that's something that i really miss a lot 
and like you know just the way that grocery stores are set up in the United States as opposed to here and like just knowing the system that you're in kind of or the country that you're in being more familiar with things I think just I kind of just miss that familiarity that I have of course being in the US so that's mainly how like quarantine life has been yeah wait 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 bug bug kill 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 I will probably cut that interruption out, but if I don't, that was my husband who just came in, said hi. Okay, back to business. How I've been feeling emotionally with Eid and the possibility of not feel seeing my family. So there is a possibility that I will not be seeing my family this summer if we aren't able to go back to the US. And even if we do go back, it'll probably be for a shorter time than I expected. I've now been in Lebanon for like maybe around 10 months. So since August, and um, yeah, that's just kind of making me a little bit sad. I think I was getting down, especially more towards the beginning of the summer, like when I ended my classes um, with my teachers. So I was feeling a bit down and like, you know, I don't know, we, especially when you have a certain expectation about how your year is gonna go and then that expectation is kind of let down for something outside of your control, like the whole quarantine situation. I think that was a little, you know, tough for me to take. I mean, I obviously miss my family so much in the U US. I miss my husband's family. I just miss like comfortability of being home, all that stuff. Just being in my home country, as I was saying before, all the things that I said before, the emotional side is a little bit tough to deal with, but it's something that, like I said, I'm trying to just rely on God and trust that what's happening is for the best for my situation. There's nothing where I can really do about it, right? So that's just kind of where my headspace is at. Sometimes I have days where I'm like, sad about it and I feel like oh we're probably not gonna get to go back if like you know when the airport closure extends like every time it becomes longer it, you know it gets like the chances of us going back to the US become slimmer and slimmer so that's kind of difficult to, to take I mean I do enjoy living in Lebanon there are a lot of things I like about living here and I've I think I've acclimated well to the country but I just have a certain amount of freedom in the US that I don't have here as a foreigner and I want to go back and kind of ex and experience that and you know use Amazon for a week or just do something I'm also just trying to make myself feel better with like remembering to rely on God and knowing that whatever Allah wills to be will be and there's nothing I can do about it and then another little life update is talking about like getting a job for the summer so that's been something that I've wanted to do um, you you guys might not know that this past year so I did have a job from September to January um, where I was babysitting for a family who lives nearby and then after that they didn't need me anymore So since then I've kind of been jobless and just been studying doing my thing, but I, I really want to get an online job Yeah, I want to get an online job either doing something like, you know, desk work like kind of like personal assistant work or working as an online teacher like an online English teacher um, or something like that. I've been trying to apply for jobs while here. I've, I've been pretty busy lately, so it's been a little bit hard, but yeah, that's something that I'm hoping to do this summer is have a job. And the job search can be, be a bit difficult, especially if you're looking for solely remote positions, which is what I'm looking for. So I feel a little bit jaded, I guess, with, my num with the number of options I have for online positions but i'm really hoping that something works out and so you know the job the job application process is always a difficult one there's never like unless you know you get the first job you apply to but that usually doesn't happen for anyone so it's been a bit a bit difficult but i need to i need to keep going and just try to find another job for the summer so i can make some money and then maybe if it's something that is like really part-time i could continue it over into the school year as well so that's how the job search has been going for me. I don't have anything yet, but I'm hopeful. And then, so now just to end the video, I'm just gonna answer a couple questions that I got on Instagram. So one person asked about how to deal with large amounts of stress, or like how do you, how do you recommend somebody deals with a large amount of stress? So in my life, when I've been heavily stressed, either by school or by school and work, or whatever, whatever the stresses are, emotional stress, whatever, the thing that makes me always feel better is like immense amounts of planning. 
So meticulously planning out my day and making sure that I maximize productivity at all times and I and I save relaxation time for when I'm done with my productive, the productive part of my day or the productive part of my week. This is something that I talked about in my video called Seven Habits of Highly Productive People. I'll put the link somewhere up here. Yeah, so when I take the time to plan everything out and it's like, you know, especially when I'm really stressed out, planning things to the last like detail, the last small detail, planning out every single thing. So like I'll take a journal and I will, um, let's say that I have like a large, large amount of homework to get done or a large amount of schoolwork or something like that. I will take out a planner and I will put, I will like timestamp everything. So I'll say starting from this time and going to this time, I'm going to be doing this task and this is how many hours this thing should take me. And then I'll do the next task starting from this time to this time. This is how many hours this should take me. Just like making, making sure that my, my day is fully planned out so I can maximize the productivity times that I have, and especially when I'm dealing with more emotional stress, having that kind of meticulous meticulous schedule, meticulous planning out, can help me not focus on the emotional stress as much, which for me is a good cop coping strategy. So when I can really focus my energy on the schoolwork that I have and the, the work that I have to do, that's a good way to distract myself from just dwelling and whatever emotional difficulty I'm going through. So of course, it, you know, you want to you don't want to just ignore emotional stress at all time and not deal with it, but you want to also not dwell in it and not just like constantly be spending your time being sad or being whatever you feel. So having a, you know, a really exact schedule and something that you can follow step by step so that you're not wasting a lot of time and you're getting a lot of things done, which also makes you feel good, can be, can be, you know, therapeutic in its own way. So that's the way that I deal with stress. I become a very meticulous planner. Leave in the comments down below how you deal with stress. Another question that I received was about tips for a young Muslima who's getting married. So tips for getting married young, kind of. What are some things that you would tell a person? I don't know the exact question because I'm you know using my phone to film so I'm not reading it but it was something along the lines of what are what are some tips you would have for a young Muslima who's getting married so me personally I got married at the age of 21 so I was fairly young I'm 23 now so it's been about two years um, it's actually coming up on my anniversary in a month so that's crazy that I've been married for two years but anyways so some tips I would have would be when you are young and you're getting married you want to be sure I mean you want to be sure no matter what age you are but especially when you're getting married young this is gonna be you know a huge portion of your life that you are with this person so you want to be you know sure that this person is not only somebody that you are attracted to and like have chemistry with and you know get along fairly well with but also that you know your priorities in life align and your values align and kind of the more the more deep and more important things and the things that will you know make or break you later later down the line align as well so you want to have those deep conversations those those serious conversations early on in your relationship so that you can make sure that this person is the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with not rush into anything i mean from the time that i started talking to my husband to when we got married it was around a year which is not a super long time but i do feel like we use that time wisely asking each other the tough questions you know making sure that you know like i said our values aligned and our priorities aligned and things like that i think another thing that a young person needs to reflect upon prior to getting married is to to really reflect on whether they're ready for that level of commitment because a marriage can be difficult and when you do get into a relationship that's that serious it does come with a lot of responsibility and a lot of sacrifice so you have to think to yourself, am I at this point in my life focused on like focused on achieving like a certain goal, for example, like achieving an educational goal or a career goal? And is that what I'm going to be spending all of my energy focusing on? And am I able to, uh, is there any leeway for me to make sacrifices in that area or, you know, change plans slightly? Or is there any wiggle room? in those kind of important life things. And if you feel like there's really not, like you're focused on becoming a doctor and you're going to get that degree no matter what, or you're fo and like at this at the specific school that you want no matter what, or you're focused on, on getting a certain, you know, your master's degree, for example, um, at this particular university, like from this time to this time, like there's no wiggle room, you will not budge, you will not let anything get in your way, then 
maybe marriage at that age is not the right thing for you. But if you're at a point in your life, even if you are still in school and you're not done with all of your degrees yet or whatever, if you are at a point in your life where you feel like, okay, yes, I have certain personal goals where I wanna finish this degree and then get this job or whatever, but at the same time, I am I, I'm capable of making shifts in my plans and I'm capable of making, sacrificing for the other person and maybe putting my goals on, not on the back burner, but pushing them off until a little bit later. Am I willing to do those kinds of things? Because if you're not willing to, to make those shifts and, and be flexible for the other person, then marriage at a young age might not be for you. But if you have an open mindset and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna achieve these goals, but it might not be in the, in the way that I originally envisioned if something happens where I can't go to the exact school that I want to go to, finish the exact degree in the time frame that I wanted to, get the exact job at the exact location that I wanted to. Sometimes, you know, when you're in a relationship, things don't go according to your original plan. And of course, even if you're not in a relationship, sometimes they don't go to, according to the original plan. But I think when you're in a relationship, things become a bit more complicated. I think that's everything that I'll include. So let me know if you have any questions down below and I will hopefully see you guys in next week's video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I will hopefully see you guys in next week's video. Assalamualaikum. Bye.